I was sitting in the uh, Shawnee Indian Clinic, IHS, uh, waiting to get some annual shots. And I picked up a bulletin, and in the bulletin I read that Santa Fe had begun a school called the Institute of American Indian Arts at that time. And in reading the description of the classes they offered, I saw a class in cartooning. So I told my grandmother that's where I wanted to go to school. Um, my uh, high school counselor wasn't too excited about that because they were grooming <laughs> me to go to college. And my older brother was the brain, so they figured I must be right behind him, and of course I wasn't the brain. He was. <laughs> I <laughs> but I was more creative. <laughs> <laughs> so we made the application, and uh, I worked for the summer in Tulsa at a bottling company, and then packed my bags, and off I went to Santa Fe. And when I got there, I discovered that they had no longer had the class in cartooning. And I figured as long as I was there, I may as well enroll in the other courses. So I started out with painting and drawing and color and design and pottery and um, discovered a, a wonderful instructor there named Seymour Tubas. And at that time, they had some great teachers. Um, uh, Alan Hauser was in the um, sculpture department as well as painting. and. Fritz Shoulder was painting, um, uh, Charles Lolema was doing jewelry, and Ottilie was doing pottery. And uh, Seymour Tubas, who became my mentor, my mentor um, he taught uh, not only drawing, painting, but he also taught woodblock printmaking, or printmaking in general. And it was a uh, method of working that uh, was new to me. I'd never known what it was all about until I did my first uh, wood block and cut out the same areas in both blocks and got yelled at severely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> they enrolled me in pottery, and uh, I sat there for a whole class period with this piece of clay, and I think <laughs> I ended up making an ash tree. Uh, <laughs> So many people did. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I left that classroom the next time it met, and they were looking for me and discovered that I was in the printmaking room, and they decided that they would leave me alone because if that's what I wanted to study, then uh, they wouldn't interfere, which was which was good. Going there, um, it was a two-year postgraduate uh, learning experience for me because at that time they did not have a, a degree program. And so it was kind of an interim between uh, high school and college or the university. Printmaking, um, sometimes it's uh, uh, monotypes, uh, mostly it's woodcuts, uh, occasionally it's etchings. Um, then painting, whether it's using acrylics or, or gouache. Um, and then drawing, which is uh, pencil, uh, pen and ink, uh, crepas, which is an oil crayon, uh, very little in the way of pastel, but then use of colored pencil, uh, Conti crayon, which is a forerunner of the pastel, and comes in the sepia tones, and I've always enjoyed working with the Conti. That's a really amazing range. What is it that you like about, well, let's start with woodblock prints. What I like about woodblock, or what I like about printmaking in general, is texture. Being able to print things that have texture, whether it's a flattened frog that I found in the highway and I've glued to a board and inked up, or you know, <laughs> taking a fish, and uh, especially if I'm teaching a class to grown-ups or to kids, uh, exposing them to going, "Well, I didn't know a fish could be printed." <laughs> of course, you don't want to eat it after you print it, but. <laughs> You can see what it looks like. And, and uh, then taking the bottoms of their tennis shoes that has a design in it and having them do a rubbing across there and seeing that, wow, I didn't notice this. Because there's a lot that's textural around us right. that we don't see. And, and 
printmaking, when I discovered it, I wanted to print everything that had <laughs> some kind of texture, whether a crack in the cement or a snake that I'd found and it had gotten flat. And so I could glue it down. And one year I took eggshells and I took an old puzzle board and I flattened the eggshells after as I glued them down and then ran my inks over it and printed it to see what it would look like. Uh, I remember telling uh, Terry uh, a long time ago about coming home from uh, a class and I would cooked uh, some beans and the beans had spilled on the stove and when I looked at the uh, image there on the stove I drew it down and I made it into a woodcut and I printed that. So influences for printmaking come from everywhere. It's just up to you to see what's there. On this, this wood block print, um, what you can see here, this is, uh, and I don't know how well you can see it, but this is the key block to this print. And uh, it's called a key block because everything else will fit within this block here. Uh, it's a, a more than an eight color woodcut. It has to be, uh, when you draw it out and you put it onto your wood, you have to flip it so that when you get ready to print it, it comes out the way you had drawn it and imagined it to be. So all of these are um, colors that will fit into this particular block and produce this print. And so each of them, I can, uh, because of the um, distance, I can print three colors at a time in some of my blocks instead of having to cut three different blocks. That's really neat. And that's done on a mahogany grain plywood uh, piece of wood. Uh, sometimes I'll use uh, poplar, which will hold a really nice line. And they're, I take it, pretty easy to work with, but they still hold the line. They do. Uh, um, this one, because it's a, a plywood, you don't have to cut real far. And uh, once you cut down below the surface, because it's all surface printing, then uh, you can take a chisel point and knock out a lot of the wood that's there. This piece is called the Spirit Gatherer. And what it is, it's a woman collecting the spirits, and the spirits are represented by these little balls of light all across the uh, landscape. And the birds are the ones that are coming to try and get the spirits before the woman collects them and puts them in her apron. But this is a pen and ink with watercolor. It's one of my favorites. Yes. And it's one you kept in your personal collection. Yes. Um, when um, I talked to uh, some of the earlier uh, artists here in Oklahoma, and uh, when the end of their life came, they had nothing of theirs in their family um, that they kept because they were trying to make a living and they were selling everything that they produced. And I made it a point that I would allow some of my work to be out on the market so long that if it didn't sell, then it would end up on our wall and in our collection and would never be sold. Okay, and this one is, uh, it's called My Daddy's House. And uh, I told people that uh, if I ever sold it, I could buy my daddy a house with it. And that's why I titled it My Daddy's House. But it's a, a piece that was um, created for um, an organization out of Washington, D.C. one year. And it's the four directions and it's four cultures. Uh, the red circle represents continuing life and remains unbroken. The hands represent communication and friendship. The trees represent the rainforest of the earth. The half mounds represent the earth. The bird coming from the center, flying out, represents prayer to the Creator. And this is just decoration to make it vibrate on the eye because before I closed in these circles, it had a lot of movement to it. But once I closed those circles in, then it made it very static. So then I went back and added this design.